The next generation of the Plasma Desktop is finally here. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to check out Plasma 6. The latest version of the KDE Plasma Desktop is here. It's a major new release, and we're going to check it out in today's video. And to say that the Plasma Desktop has a ton of fans out there would be an understatement. It's one of the most celebrated Linux desktop environments out there, and with good reason. It looks amazing. There's a ton of customization options. And it's just a pleasant desktop overall. And now that Plasma 6 is finally here, we get to take a look at the next generation of Plasma, and I'm very excited to dive in. So what I'm going to do is give you my thoughts on Plasma 6. It was released late last month, and I finally had a chance to sit down with it and check it out. So what I'm going to do in today's video is give you my impressions. Now keep in mind, the Plasma 6 desktop has not been out all that long, so it's possible that with long-term usage, I might have a different opinion. On my end, I'm checking this out for the very first time, so for me, it's going to be a brand new experience. Now, we'll dive in in just a moment, but before we do, I just wanted to let you guys know that the official Learn Linux TV shop has just been updated with brand new products. For example, you can get yourself an apt install coffee shirt, just like the one I'm wearing in today's video. And that's not all. Inside the shop, you'll find distro-themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you could check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time. So it's a win-win. And thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. I couldn't do this without you. You guys are awesome. And with all of that out of the way, it's time to dive into Plasma 6. So let's get started. First of all, the Plasma Desktop probably needs no introduction on my channel due to its popularity, but if you are new to Linux, Plasma is one of a multitude of desktop environments that are designed for Linux, with some distributions even using it as their default desktop. Plasma offers a classic style desktop with a modern theme, and in my opinion, it's really good. Now if you need more information than I just gave you when it comes to the Plasma Desktop, I have an entire video that covers desktop environments in great detail, so I'll leave a card for that right about here if you want to check out that video. Anyway, in late February of 2024, which was last month as of recording time, the KDE community officially released Plasma 6, which is a huge release with a ton of new features and changes. As of recording time, Plasma 6 has had two bug fix releases since it came out, so it doesn't look like the developers will be slowing down anytime soon. And now that Plasma 6 is available, what we'll do in today's video is take a look at the updated theme, the updated applications, and overall, we'll see what's different in the new release. But I can already tell you that Plasma 6 is definitely a huge release. And not only is it huge, it's really awesome. On my end, I installed Plasma on my ThinkPad X1 Carbon, and the way that I went about it is I installed KDE Neon, a special Linux distribution that's produced by the KDE community, and the purpose behind that distribution is to provide you with the latest KDE experience. I figured it would be better to use this distribution for the review since it's blessed by the KDE community and also because I wanted to make sure that I had the full Plasma experience. After I finished installing KDE Neon, I also made sure to install all available updates as well, and once that process finished, I ended up on Plasma version 6.0.2, and that's the latest version as of recording time. One reason why I mention this is because it's always possible other reviewers might have run into problems that I didn't run into on account of the fact that I'm coming at this review two point releases later and that means that some bugs that other people ran into might have been fixed. At first glance, I think the first thing that stands out is definitely the wallpaper, which I really love. The artwork is called Scarlet Tree and it was created by someone with the handle Axolotl. This wallpaper even has a dark mode version as well, which is really cool. Overall, I think this wallpaper is awesome. So Axolotl, if you're watching this review, thank you so much for providing your artwork to the KDE community. It looks really good. Another obvious change is the panel layout, which isn't extremely different, but its default layout is a floating panel in Plasma 6. As you can see, you can actually see the desktop around the edges of the panel rather than it stretching to both sides of the screen like it did before. And actually, I like this a lot. In fact, I might even like it better. But if you're not a fan of the floating layout, you can choose a different one. There's a handful of different layouts available. And in fact, when you go to customize the layout 
which you could do by right clicking on the panel, you'll see this nifty screen right here, which makes it really easy to customize the panel. One thing I've always loved about Plasma is that the project has a design language that's extremely unique and it doesn't take too long to figure out how to do anything. The default theme has been refreshed as well, and to me, it doesn't look like there's a huge change this time around, but the theme does seem more consistent here in Plasma 6. It also seems more polished than before, and if I didn't know any better, I would say polish was one of the main focuses on overhauling the theme. It's not going to seem like a colossal change, but overall it does look a lot better. Another really cool feature is the return of the desktop cube, which has made its way back into Plasma with Plasma 6 after having been removed for a while. And this is something I really enjoyed in the past, so I'm very happy to see this return. Since we're on the subject of virtual desktops, for some reason, virtual desktops are entirely disabled in Plasma 6, and I don't really know why because it's a very useful feature, and I think a lot of people might miss out because unless you knew that this feature was here, you might miss it. If you want to enable virtual desktops and try it out for yourself, all you have to do is go to System Settings, and once there, go to Window Management, and inside that section, you'll find settings for virtual desktops. There, you can add additional desktops, and as soon as you do, you should see immediately that a desktop switcher appears right here on the panel, and this gives you an easy method for switching between your virtual desktops. Now the desktop cube, which is another method for switching between virtual desktops, if you want to enable that, it's also a bit hidden, so here's how you find it. In the same area as our previous setting, you'll find a place to configure desktop effects. Inside there, if you scroll down, you'll find a section for window management, and underneath there, you can enable the cube effect. To activate the cube, what you'll do is hold down super and press letter C. How cool is that? Another aspect of Plasma 6 that I quite liked is how smooth it feels overall. The entire desktop is very fast, and all of the animations and scrolling is just so smooth that it's kind of surprising. In fact, this is definitely the smoothest feeling Plasma desktop that I've ever used. There's just so much attention to detail here that it just makes everything feel that much better. Wayland was also a big focus in this release. In fact, it's default now, so if you use Plasma 6 and you don't choose anything else, then you're using Wayland. Wayland is a brand new display manager that replaces X11 from the past, but if you have some sort of a problem with Wayland, X11 is still available if you need it. Now, I've talked a bit about what's changed in the new release, but there's one thing that hasn't changed in this release, and I think it's a good thing, and that is Plasma 6 is very customizable. In fact, for my entire career, I've found KDE to be one of, if not the most customizable desktops available, and Plasma 6 is no exception. I mean, you can have more than one panel if you wanted to. You could change the sizes of the panels, the contents of what's on the panels. You can add widgets to the desktop. So if you're the type of person that's kind of a control freak when it comes to your computer and all of its settings, then you should probably run to Plasma right now because Plasma 6 will absolutely delight you. But overall, my experience with Plasma 6 was very, very good. I would love to go over more of its new features, but the thing is, Plasma 6 has so many changes and improvements, I don't think it's possible for me to list them all in one video. But the overall experience that I had with Plasma 6 was very pleasant. I had no problems or crashes or anything like that. I did have some issues with tearing a little bit when I used my screen recorder, but that's expected because my screen recorder is having issues. So if you noticed any lagginess in the screen recording, it's not Plasma's fault. It's literally my capture card that's to blame for that. But on my end, I had no problems at all, and it was a very, very fun experience. And with that said, there's our video. I created this video to give you my impressions on the Plasma 6 desktop, and that's exactly what I've done. I think it's an awesome desktop, and I definitely recommend that you check it out. Did you like this video? If you did, then be sure to click the like button to let YouTube know that you like this video. That way, we might see more Linux content on YouTube. That would be awesome. Also, be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux if you haven't already done so. That way, you'll be the first to see brand new videos as soon as they come out. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.